If you work with Blazor, I'm going to show you a Visual Studio extension that will make your life easier. From easy isolated file creation to managing namespaces, this extension finds a lot of little annoyances and eliminates them. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth look at a technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to a question. That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So here we have a, a, a repo by Jimmy Engstrom called blasm.extension. And I'm going to show you how to install this in just a minute. But if you go to this repo, um, you'll find a whole bunch of documentation here. It's really well laid out. It explains which things are in, are in testing or in beta and you know what this thing does. Okay, so we're going to walk through this whole thing, but I just want to show you that it does have a repo. You can walk through, kind of explains everything. You can go right to this repo, or I'll link it down below, um, or you can go from the extensions page. So speaking of the extensions page, if you go to extensions, manage extensions, you can search for Blasm Extension by Jimmy Engstrom. And here, again, great documentation. It's reading from that same readme file. That's one of the um, highlights of Visual Studio does now. Um, so you can kind of see exactly what this thing does. Go ahead and install it, which means you have to restart Visual Studio, and then either create a, a Blazor product or open up one of the ones you already have. So when you do that, I have a suggestion app open here. There's a bunch of things in here that you can do. So let's come down here to our profile.razor. Notice it's, it's, it's got a bit of, of Razor syntax. It's got a bit of um, code behind down here as well. So imagine for a minute, we wanted to and ignore the errors. It's not actually an error, um, just needs to rebuild. So imagine for a minute, we wanted to create a code behind for this file. Maybe um, just a, a code behind file. We didn't have any code in this file. Okay, now we do, but not a problem. Let's say we didn't. We could just right click on here and say, create code behind. And doing so, now there's a profile.razor.cs page. They might say, well, wait, Tim, there already is code there. Yeah, I know. That was just a demo. But let's say that you did have code there. Let's go ahead and delete this. Um, in fact, let's create a new component. So we're going to say uh, test.razor. And in this component, we're going to say string test equals um, hello world, if I can type today. Now, I'm just going to say up here at test just to show that, you know, those two are linked and, and so on, right? And we can we can build the solution. It will hopefully build. Um, and when we do, um, now you've got this file that we can, we can work with, right? So let's first go into this file and say, hey, you know what? We want to move this code to the code behind. Now, since there's already code here, this is part of Visual Studio. We can say quick actions refactoring, extract blocked code behind. Great. So now we have this new file that we can save. We can, you know, we can build. It's going to build the same way. Um, notice that we have at test here, but the code behind file actually has a, the, the code for it. Now, that's normal Visual Studio, but the other direction isn't in Visual Studio, but it's in this extension. We can right click on this and down here we can say move code behind to razor. So it's the opposite direction. If we do that, now this is in, this is still in beta, so there's maybe some bugs to it. But if you notice, it brings it right back in like it was. So excellent. So we can go the other direction if we ever want to. So Visual Studio allows one direction, this extension allows the other. But maybe you want to have an isolated CSS for this component. Not a problem. Right click on here and say create isolated CSS. And if you notice now, there's our test.razor.css. All it's doing is creating an empty file with a .css at the end of it after using the full name, which is all we would do. But in order to do this, we would say, well, I want to, you know, control shift A and I want to say test.razor.css. Well, instead of doing all that, we just right click and say create isolated CSS for this particular component. Or what if we created isolated JavaScript? Same thing. Or what if we wanted to find the, well, let's go with a different one for finding component usages. Let's go with not authorized. Let's find component usages. Well, here's all the places that not authorized is used in my project. 
awesome. We can track that down very easily. If you want to create B unit tests, so testing for your, your UI, right click on it and say, generate B unit test. Do you want as razor syntax or C sharp syntax? Let's just say C sharp syntax, which it shouldn't be much here, but that's what it's going to paste out as. Okay. So that creates for us the syntax we need to do a B unit test of this component. But wait, there's more. So let's talk about if we were in, let's go with a bigger uh, component, maybe um, let's go into suggestions. And in here, we have this, this um, container and the, the button inside of it. Maybe we see that we're using this more than once. And we say, hey, I would like to extract this into something that um, can actually be its own component. Not a problem. Highlight it, right click, and then down here, extract to component. And we're going to say um, test button. Okay. And say add component. Now we have a test button class, which has that code in it. And instead of the code being there, it put the reference to that test button um, object in our code. So really quickly allows the change and move over. Now I go ahead and undo that because I want to actually be able to run this in just a minute. But if we um, next want to find, hey, what are the routes? So what, what routes do we have on this page? Well, if you go to extensions, Blasm, show Blazor routes. Here's all the routes for my project. Okay. And if we hit refresh, I had a profile in there called test. It's gone now because we just refreshed it. So that, that's all the routes for my project. But wait, what if I come over here to test? Seems like I may have done it before you saw on video. Um, if I said page and said uh, testing, I hit save, I refresh my routes, and there's a testing route. And by the way, if I click on a route, double click on a route, it takes you right to that route. Okay. So very quick to see your routes. You can actually dock this if you want somewhere and, and always see what routes are available. Now, let's say that you want to test your project out. Let's close all our tabs. Um, let's get rid of test because I don't need it. So let's figure out how to run our project. Now, this is a, I think they call it a, he calls it a beta version. Um, this is something he's trying out. It's an experimental thing he's trying. One of the things he found was that when he was doing a lot of testing in Blazor and he wanted to keep restarting and doing hot reload, um, the hot reload inside of Visual Studio was a little slower than the hot reload if you ran it out of PowerShell. And so you can go to PowerShell and just say, you know, .NET watch, and it will launch up your project very quickly. But doing so every time, it takes a couple of extra steps, unless you right click on your project now and say run .NET watch. And to do that, it then just pops open a PowerShell window, builds the project, and once it's done, hey, it's starting up. Now it's actually listening. If we went to that URL of the project, it would um, be running. I just turned on nullability, by the way, which is why I have all these warnings. So this is in the, this project's in the middle of, of work. So that's some of the things this, this Blasm extension does for us. It creates a lot of little uh, quality of life improvements that can be made that allow you to go a little faster when you're building or working with Blazor. So I would definitely encourage you to check it out. If you work with Blazor, this is definitely one that I'd encourage you to install, try, and potentially add into your normal build cycle of things you do with Blazor. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.